Hey friends, it's Sonya from Junk Monkey Paint Company. How's everybody out there doing today? As you log on, say hello. It's Sunday afternoon. Let's see what everybody's up to today. I know there's a football game going on. What's everybody else got going on, all right? Talk to me as you pop on. It is Sonya. You guys know me, of course, from Junk Monkey, right? Where I love to make things beautiful through the power of paint. Just put a little bit of paint on it. Totally goes the distance, right? Who else agrees that that could be the biggest change ever? Just putting some color on it. And with that, who are my color lovers? Because I love me some color. Hey, Damika, how are you, girl? What's going down? How are you? Hopefully it's a little bit warmer where you are today. It's a beautiful day outside. The roads are dry. And uh, yeah, so it's it's really, really nice. We're inside. This is our Sunday afternoon. And I had to do some, a little bit of painting, right? Because no day is complete with just a little bit of painting. Hey, Pam, how are you? So this is my candidate today, all right? Got her for all of $10, okay? $10, all right, there you go. I love it, it's brownie frowny, okay? Who knows that speckled brown stuff, okay? For lack of a better word, the speckled brown stuff? Yeah, and you're over it, right? And you're like, that's totally 1980s, who wants that? Um, so got this one for $10, figured I'd put some paint on it. And sometimes when I buy furniture, I look at the size of what it is and think to myself, okay, like how could I use this? How would somebody use this? And it's a bit of a smaller end table. And so I'm thinking to myself, this could totally be the perfect kitty gaming table. All right, you know? So it could be a gift, gift for somebody. So I thought, I think I'm gonna flip this one into from 80s to present time gaming table. I'm gonna show you how I do it and how I bring it to life. It's really, really not that hard. Bring your questions. So if you guys have questions on here today, I'd be more than happy to help you as I paint. I'm gonna use Liberty Blue, love it. You know what, it matches my nails. Maybe that's why I was inspired today. I don't know, I don't know. Hey Kim, hey Linda, 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 all right. So we got our Liberty Blue. Honestly, guys, I don't judge people who don't clean. It's totally up to you. So all I did was dust this piece off. I have not done anything with it other than get my paint selection, which is the fun part. And now I'm gonna put it on, okay? So I got my shabby chip brush. Love that distress style. Look how pretty. Let me see here. Let me tip this down so you guys can see it. Hey, girly, how are you, Melanie? Oh my gosh, yes, Lori, your paint is on its way, girl. I remember, oh my gosh. You're gonna have so many pictures to send me, okay? I'm gonna hold you to it. And make sure you do that, all right? Love, love, love. Oh my gosh, yeah, you people from sunny uh, Florida, you make me jealous. You make me jealous, all right? Yeah, I know you're here. I know you're here. Look how pretty, blue paint, right? So my favorite color in the whole wide world, ever since I've been a little girl, is blue. What's your color? Now remember, you can pick your base color. I'm a lover of teal because as an adult, that's the way the blue morphed for me, like into the blue teals. But what's your favorite color? Tell me, talk to me. Hey, Valeria. Laura, you love that color, me too. Me too. I love it as well. We have lots of blues and I just feel like, you know, like you paint something with a blue that you haven't painted in for a while. I actually use this blue in um, on a piece that I did for my Coach and Create Club. We were talking about a paint technique and I was showing them this week. And I use this color as the base of it. And uh, you know, when I whipped it out, I'm like, dang, I haven't used this paint color in a long time and I forgot how much I really liked it. So this is why this color is being born today for this piece because, you know what? I've refallen back in love with it, all right? There you go. So putting a little bit of color on it. Guys, can you see how nice that is already? I just love it. And this is just one, one coat, right? Now, if you're somebody who wants more of an all-over coat, just do that. Just let this dry. It'll be dried about 30 minutes or so, if, especially if you have some good airflow going down. And then put your second coat on it, all right? But I got plans for the top, all right? So if you have a piece of brownie furniture right now, that a brownie frowny, you know what I mean, right? It's just, it's just older. It just doesn't have a purpose anymore in your life. You feel like it's outdated. It doesn't match what you have going on. This is a quick way to redo a smaller table and to turn it into maybe a gift for somebody for like Valentine's Day if you have little kitties in the family. Because I'm telling you, what I'm about to do with this table would look gosh darn cute if you were to do it in pinks or red or something fun like that, right? Even pastel colors but I'm planning to flip it into a game table. So watch it, watch what I do with just paint, right? LaRonda says, black is my favorite color. Classic, right? Black goes with pretty much everything. Girls always gotta have a black dress. 
What do you guys think of the black ceilings and the black walls that are like out there and trending right now? Which I'm being, I'm being told everywhere that color is going to be a trend for this year, which, okay, they just all needed to get with the program, right? Because we all know that color's been in style for eons. It just took the rest of the world a little bit to catch up to us, right? We knew that it wasn't all going to be about white farmhouse. We knew that the color was going to be there somewhere, you know? So I'm glad they finally caught up to us and said, okay, yeah, all you color people, you're not crazy. It's totally fun to have a statement piece, a hot pink statement piece, or, you know, a blue or an accent color. So I'm glad they finally caught on, right? You went to a restaurant where it was all black. How was that? Hey, Nan, how are you? Everybody say hello to Nan. Um, how was that, Linda? I guess it was a very dark mood, mood lighting going on there. So for those of you who are joining me, I am just painting a $10 piece of furniture that is brownie frowny that I found. I'm giving it a pop of color. Honestly, all I did was dust it and throw this on. Before that, all I did was go to the actual thrift store and throw it in the back of my car. My poor little hamster mobile. I call it the hamster mobile because, you know, the Kia commercials with the little um, Kia hamsters. You know what I'm talking about, right? So my little Kia car has traveled long, long distances with me, and she's always served me well, God love her. I fit like 70 kitchens in the back of that little car. It's always funny because when I was at a period of time in my business where I was really, really busy painting cabinets for everybody, um, if you can imagine as many cabinets that you have in your kitchen, and I mean, there were days and weeks that I do kitchens with like, 50 odd pieces I would throw it all in the back of my car and the husband would come out going do you need some help and I'm like no no I got it I'm good I'm good and then he'd look and he'd be like where's your truck and I'm like there is no truck there is just the hamster mobile and I put the back seats down way to go right who knows what I'm talking about you got a Cherokee oh Tracy I gotta tell you I've I've actually been in love with the Jeep Cher Cherokee for a long long time I do like Jeeps. I'm a Jeep girl. I am a Jeep girl. Look at that. Love how it's coming together. Almost done with this side over here. So who's in the living room right now watching like football or something with their hubby and watching on here? I'm curious. I'm watching you paint. <laughs> hey, Don, how are you? You're using a different pink color in each room for the furniture I'm painting. Don, I love that. I love it, right? Because your space should be fun. There is nothing wrong with color. And at the end of the day, that's where, you know, that's your four corners of the world. That's where you come home. That's what makes you happy. So who even cares what color trends say, right? It's got to be about what makes you happy. And um, you know what? If color makes you happy, which has been making me happy for a long, long time, um, I'm just going to keep going with it, you know? It's fun. It's us people that love color, that have color in their home, and then somebody comes over to the house and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your buffet, right? Because they are nervous to paint it, and um, they see yours, and they know that you took the plunge and you put that color on it, and they're usually envious. That's what I call the eye candy pieces, right? You can't help but stare at it. They're beautiful, but yet it can be scary for some people. But I have to tell you that all you have to do is just paint all over it again if you don't like it, right? Oh, you're watching the Jaguar Steelers game. Yeah, right. My husband had to leave early. Hmm. I wonder why. He left. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I know what's going down. That's one thing I did learn when I moved from Canada to the U.S. You people love your football. Me? I can't figure out what's going down, okay? I cannot figure out what's going down. I'm a terrible person to watch football with. I get bored and uh, I ask a lot of questions and then, and then it's all over from there. Then it's all over. But I will join you for the munchies, okay? So if you got good munchies going down, please invite me over because that in itself could be a sport and lots of fun, right? So I'm just getting the legs right now, getting them all around. Lisa, I took out the seats. Woo! Seats out of my old caravan, instant covered haul, anything. Yeah, right? Who needs a truck? Plus, you've always got the cover over it. I'm telling you. We're smart. We just weren't born yesterday. Yeah. Roxana asked, do your paints have a long shelf life? Ooh, 
yes, Roxanna was the name. Kaylin, my assistant's in the background, and she's actually helping me holler out any questions that you guys might have while I'm painting live for you here. Um, so shelf life, our paints last, honestly, I would give it like two years. But I'm somebody that I buy the paint or I would get the paint or for any projects that I'm working on pretty much close to the time that you would need it, right? Um, so, but just to let you know that once you've purchased it, it lasts a long time, all right? You just don't want to let it freeze or you don't want to put it into the direct sunlight because it is a chalky style paint. So remember that it can get activated, okay, in heat. It can dry really quickly. So don't do that to yourself because you'll hate yourself later, all right? But yeah, just take it out, stir it up. I collect stir sticks and I also keep a, um, I keep one of those little, what do you call it? Help me out here. One of those things, your mixer upper, you know what I'm talking about when you're doing cake batters. What are they called? Not spatula, help me. Help me, you know one of those things when you make a cake and you're like, beat it. Is it the beater? No, 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 it's the handheld one. What's it called? Quit watching the game and switch to Hallmark Channel. There you go. I was watching Hallmark last night before I went to bed. No word of a lie. All right, I think I've got it all. Do you guys see any spots I've missed? Let's go around the back here. Terry asked, are we gonna use a stencil? Terry, stay tuned my girl because I got to tell you, I was out with the stencils and trying to think to myself, what can I do to the top of it? And then I was talking here with Kate and we came up with a great idea because you know what? It is the perfect size for a gaming uh, style table. We're actually talking and she was saying that she was at the beach. I was in a beach house and it re the table reminded her of a little table that they, that was there for everybody to game on and play like, you know, chess and checkers and that sort of thing. And then I started thinking, yes. This will be the perfect size, right? A whisk, thank you very, very much. Yes, a whisk. So yeah, I like to keep like a dollar store whisk um, from literally the Dollar Tree or something like that with me and I can always whisk my paint back together because sometimes just like natural peanut butter um, can, se can separate, our handmade chalky paints can do that as well. So it's just a way for you to have something else that will help you. You can. So here's my thing when it comes to, um, when it comes to sealing your piece. If your piece is decorative, you really don't have the seal because all it's gonna do is just like sit there and look pretty in the corner. But if you have a piece that's gonna get a lot of use, then you wanna seal it, okay? So you wanna think about things like tabletops and um, end stands or anything like that, all right? Now this piece here, you know what? This is, this is something that kids are gonna play with, okay? And kids are gonna use. That's how I'm going to actually flip this piece as I bring it together here and show you. So I put the blue on here. Now I'm going to take a, um, a grit, a medium grit sand pad, and I'm gonna to start to do some distressing. So I don't really have to protect this piece because in my mind, I really like that distressed look, right? So for me, chips and dents and dings, are only gonna look the part, right? You see how I'm starting to put some distressing on there right there? So I'm gonna work my way around and do that. So no, I would not even seal this piece because I kinda love that look, all right? So, oh, is Carrie on here? Yep. Hey, Carrie. From? I get my stencils, I'm gonna be honest with you, all over. I kind of have a collection that I've formed over years. Years of um, just buying them. But I'm, I'm somebody who keeps my stencils and um, I like to use them over and over again, right? So keep them nice and flat in a space. You can hang them, you can use clothes pins to hang them on your wall or something like that. But keep them, right? And I really, really like, I'm gonna say that my favorite stencil is gonna be the ones that are made of the hard plastic. I just love to be able to throw them in my sink, let them run under some water, and use, especially, you know, when I'm using Jug Monkey paints, it's all water-based, so it just runs right off. And then I'm back to square one. So then they last as long as you just keep doing that, right? Keep protecting them. So I get them from all over. Walmart's got an amazing selection of stencils out right now, which I'm really in love with. But I gotta tell you, my favorite place is definitely Hobby Lobby because they have the two, they are home of the $2.99 stencil. And plus they are also home of the 40% off coupon. Hello, right? And so it makes it really, really cheap. And they change them out with the seasons, which I, which is what I really, really like. So they change them out, and then um, 
if you got one from last season, like I was really big into owls and did lots of paint parties with owls. And uh, so I have a ton of those. But then you know what, you might go back in a month or two and be like, all oh, the owls are gone, but now they're replaced with unicorns. So then, the, you know what I mean? Keep just like buying and adding, right? So for $2 or, you know, $5.99, especially if you're somebody that loves to do this sort of thing, it just keeps, keeps giving back to you right when you need it because you got them. So guys, look at this. Can you see that, how pretty that is? Like I am in love with that. That's just blue and me doing a quick sand over it while I'm working on here. So I can totally seal if I really wanted to. I don't want to because I'm thinking, I really am thinking like more of a distressed, even like a beachy kind of feel, right? Just like, I don't know, just think even primitive and just really, really old, been around the block. So now what I'm gonna do is I've only done the, ex the actual frame around it blue. Now, what's really cool, let's see here what Susie's saying. What can you do to the top if it's scratched or damaged but you wanna keep the wood design? Okay, so one of my favorite things to do when it comes to wood surfaces, I'll tell you my two favorite things to go to. If I wanna keep this with the wood grain showing through, I could go to somewhere like a Lowe's and get something what's called Poly Shades. Has anybody heard of that before? P-O-L-Y Shades. That is an amazing finish for uh, putting on existing wood finishes. It is like a poly sealer already, that's what it is, but it's tinted. So what you're doing is you're sealing the piece in, but it's actually a color over it. So for example, I did, I used some in my kitchen and it was a, uh, it was planked tongue and groove wood and I wanted a change. So I went and I got some poly shades that was in the shade of, I think it was like espresso or java bean and I put it over the top of it. So because it's that poly, but it's tinted, you can actually still see the wood grain underneath it. So you're not hiding it completely, but you're still able to see it, but it gives it a new look, right? So I could totally freshen this up with even like a gray poly shades. How pretty would that be? That's if I wanted to still see the grain underneath, but I, at the same time, I wanted to just kind of clean it up and make it look fresh, right? So that's awesome. The other thing is if you have a real wood piece, okay, this has like a veneer over the top of it, but if you went and you found, uh, or you have a real wood piece and this chipped and ding, then you just want to appreciate it as it is. Go get yourself some, um, what's it called? Old English, but they make the old English that actually has a stain inside of it as well. It's like, you can see dark and there's also stain for, um, golden oak so go get yourself some old english you can usually get it at like walmart's and stuff like that i think they carry that particular kind as well and then rub it all over it it is amazing okay she okay so heather says i was wondering if that would work with the antique glaze brown for the wood you mean to put it over it well if you have a really really shiny surface it might unless it was an actual like raw wood the glaze would definitely stick to it but the glaze is meant to stick to the paint so having your base down first and then your glaze basically grabs a hold of on top of your paint so your paint becomes the base layer because the glaze is actually not a paint it's a fluid that sits on top of it right so you got to make sure it has somewhere to grip into so like I say unless it's like raw wood your your glaze um, or if it is raw wood it's okay it's got somewhere to go you can use your glaze as like a stain but if it's over veneer you're gonna want to put some paint on it first before you put that over the glaze over the top of it so it has somewhere to go make sense hopefully that makes sense okay guys here's what I'm gonna do so we've also got this color called smoky coal which you know we have different different grays I gotta tell you this gray here the smoky coal is like a it's what I call a brown gray all right and there's many many grays a lot of grays are very cold sometimes you put gray in your home and you think well maybe if I just pick a gray and I'll put it in my home and it will work and you're like I don't really like how that looks it's because maybe the base shade of your paint was a little bit off with the colors that you have if you're somebody who's trying to bring gray into your space you want to find a gray that has a brown comes from what's called a brown family okay if you ever seen those long paint strips a lot of times now I kind of miss them because you go to stores and you just see the actual paint chip itself right whereas if you go to the store and they don't have those long fan deck cards you can actually go and to the counter and say hey can I see the paint fan deck that this actually came from then when you look at those basic colors look at the very one on the very bottom the root okay so if I were to look at the root 
for this one is say, for example, if you saw this color in a store, the root of this one is gonna be brown, all right? Whereas sometimes you get, you get grays that are actually blue, and it's because if you looked on that fan deck card at the very bottom, it's got a bluer base, all right? So if you're somebody out there who's looking to flip a piece of furniture and you wanna bring gray into your space, but you have a brown, rustic interior, don't do the cold grays. You want to go with a gray that comes from the brown family because yes, it is gray, but let me just tell you, it's going to pair beautifully with brown furniture because inside, let me put a little bit more on here so you can really see it. It's because you're going to really be able to see that it matches so nice with a brown. I mean, even looking at this, I'm going over brown right now, but can you see what I'm saying? I'll pull up another gray so you know what I mean. So that's, that's sometimes something that people run into where you put gray, but not all grays are created equal. So I would go to, if you're painting walls and you're not even talking about painting furniture, but you know, you're out and about yourself and you're trying to find a wall cover paint, I would go to the desk and I would say to the gentleman at the desk, hey, Mr. Lowe's guy, because believe it or not, they usually keep them inside their desk in that area in Tupperware containers. I know this for a fact. And you can say, hey, can I get that Sherwin-Williams or whatever fan deck so I can look up the wall color for this paint and see what the actual family of it is, okay? So you see that? It's a brown gray. Let me show you the difference of what I mean when I say there's other grays. Let's see here. Uh, let me use this one. Okay. Okay. So this is a, this one here is our Paris, okay? So do you see how that's a lighter gray? This is a brown gray. Can you see the difference? This is gonna be a colder, true elephant gray. This one is the brown gray. See that? So hopefully that helps somebody out there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting on the gray, and I'll show you why I'm doing this in just a second. We're gonna put this on right now. By the way, if this, um, if you're really enjoying this video, I would love it if you would take a moment to hit share, help somebody else out who's picking pink colors, or just has a piece of brownie frowny furniture that needs some help, okay? It doesn't have to be hard. Just pick your piece, pick your color, and go to town. It's not that hard, guys. And like I say, when you're sick of the color, just paint over it again. It's so, so easy. You love the gray, yes. My work surface? You mean what's below the table? Yes. This is actually a fold-up table with a beautiful polka dot canvas um, canvas tablecloth that I got, go figure Sonya in the clearance section, at Walmart for all of two dollars, okay? Love it. All right, so I've got my first layer down because guys, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a chalkboard. You guys know that if you do not um, if you do not seal your piece, then ultimately you got a chalkboard on your hands, right? Did you guys know that? So we see lots of people that come in, especially teenagers who want to have an accent wall in their space. And maybe they want to have a teal chalkboard wall, right? Where their friends can come and they can kind of like all leave messages for each other because we know they're not really writing their homework, right? Yeah. Let me dry this really, really fast. Hey, Amy, Debbie. So when I do chalkboards, I like to brush on my paint, and then we're gonna do a second layer as well. The gray that I'm using right now is called Smoky Coal. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Beautiful brown gray. So, and I love it because it's on a frame that I painted with Liberty Blue and I've brought the grain of the wood that's underneath it out through, so my gray is gonna blend so beautiful because it's got that rustic flare, right? If I was going for more of a, let's see, if I was going for more of a space that I wanted a traditional gray, I would do like Paris gray, make sense? All right, let's just give this a second. Can you guys still hear me while I'm talking? Hopefully you can. I'm just gonna let this dry real fast, all right? show you how to bring it together and then this could totally be a gift for somebody for Valentine's Day like if you have like little girls in your life um, the little artists in your life right but I'll show you how I make use of it Let's see Rachel says I'd love to see a navy tutorial I'm afraid of it looking purple navy yes right this could be true 
that means, so in our color world, you would want to use midnight blue. It is a true navy. There is no purple into it. But if you're out picking colors for your space, do that trick of what I told you about going to the desk and saying, hey, can I see the actual family of that fan deck of colors that I have in my hands? Do that way you can see where it fits in in the color, in the color family. And you can look at the bottom and know that, yep, I don't want this one because it's purple. That table would make a great bench too. Yeah, I could totally see that. You know what, sometimes when I find pieces like this that have that little like drop down into it, I agree with you because imagine if you just had a pillow, you can get a piece of foam like at Walmart or something and cover it, drop it right on top and make yourself a square pillow and you've got a little seat, right? Heather's got smoky coal and Paris gray, very nice. And remember Heather, if you're trying to do like a gray weather, you can always mix that two, the two colors together as well, right? Our paints do mix up, so you can do your own shades. But one of the things that I love to do is my weathered effect, right? With the um, with the actual like using different colors. I'm almost done here. Let's see here. Ah, oh, you're so welcome. Yep, Olga, it is a heat gun. So this is my favorite one that I use. It's made by Wagner. It's a very affordable one. I think this one costs right around $23, $25. Um, I'll post a link if anybody's interested. But I keep going back to this one, okay? So I've got like a couple of these. But what's nice is it speeds up your paint process for you because, um, you know, with a hair dryer, it can take a long time, right? But remember, this is a heat gun. It's actually made for taking paint off. So that's why you see me wiggling it back and front, forth. You know what I mean? Because if I left it in one place, it would actually make my paint come off. Hey Jasmine! Oh, from Italy, girl! Holy moly! Well, I am honored that you are here today. What's the weather like in Italy? Hey Sarah! How are you? Back at you, girl. How can you not love the paint, right? I just love the paint. Painting makes my day. Alright, I think we're good. So if you're going to create a chalkboard effect, here's what I do. Put down your first... Put down your first, I'm just doing this to kind of get any like hairs that are in my piece. By the way, when you're working on pieces and you're trying to like not make them look rough but you want them more polished, you want to get yourself a sand pad that's like a fine grit, okay? Because what that's going to do is it's not going to rip your paint off. I'm using a heavy grip, grit so it will rip my paint off, right, because I want the distressed look. But a really good tip is to, if you get yourself two things, get yourself a fine grit sand pad or, here's a trick. You can go to like um, a dollar store. You know how they have those Scotch Bright dish um, dish uh, scrubbers for like your pat, you know, for your dishes, for your uh, pots and pans, and that sort of thing. Not the wire one, but it's more of like the green scrubbies. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes they can come in gray and green and stuff like that. But that is an amazing thing because it's so soft that you can polish your pieces because they can go around like you know curves and things like that and when it doesn't rip your paint off it's amazing for a polisher for in between your coats okay so so cool all right hey i'd love to see you kimberly absolutely so when i do my chalkboard tops i put my first layer down of my whatever color now remember because this is a chalkboard style paint or a chalky style paint i should say you can have a chalkboard of any color you want okay so gone are the days of just having black so now i put one coat down i do like to brush it down because I'm going to be using this as a chalkboard, so I kind of like the texture that the brush will help give it, so that when um, the people are using this uh, and purchases this, takes it home from my shop, some, you know, somebody takes it home, that um, the chalk, when you write over it, it will actually, behind the scenes, pick up on all those, um, just the texture of the brush marks, right? And it just helps you get a really nice chalkboard, so that way it, um, it sticks down, and it's, it, you know, when you actually take the chalk piece, it's not like it's gonna be a faint color. It's gonna come out really nice and vibrant because the texture just um, works really well with the flow of the actual chalk stick over the top of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's see here. You want to paint your kitchen cabinets. They are now pecan on birch wood. I want to lighten up my kitchen with a shabby chic country look. Oh, what do you think, guys? Let's help Deborah out. Shabby chic country look. I'm thinking antique lace. I gotta tell you. The reason why is it's um, a cream color that's farmhouse -y, you know, fits the farmhouse world, but yet it's also a traditional color that will span the test of time, like a, like a classic timeless feel. It has no yellows into it, so that means it will go with a lot of different things, but because it's a cream, it's going to fit that farmhouse um, shabby chic, because if you're going with shabby chic, shabby chic is usually 
uh, usually more lighter colors, right? So you could totally do that if you want that sort of feel. That would be really nice. All right, I'm putting my second coat of paint on here. Thank you guys for sharing this video. That is so awesome. I really appreciate your support. Yeah, Tammy, tell us, what sort of look are you going for? That's what I tell people. Before you get to the point of picking your color, think about what you want your room to feel like. That's all you gotta do. How do you want your room to feel? When you look at pictures online or on Pinterest, which ones are you pinning? Like, which ones have you had to go back and look at? What, what style are you drawn to? Then once you have your style, you know that there are colors that fall within that style, right? And that will help you narrow it down because like I just said, if you want the shabby chic distress look, you're going to go for lighter colors. But if you're somebody likes, you know, I like boho and I love the collect it look and I love yellows and blues and brown grays and, and colors like that, then you know what? That opens you up to other colors to look at, right? So, all right. So there we go. I think I've got this all done inside. Now what I can do if I want is come back with my blue brush and just kind of like any spots where... My brush flicked that over. It's only paint after all, right? And I can kind of like tidy up my edges here a little bit. But I like the imperfectly perfect look, right? Remember, so I'm just going for beautiful, worn, a oh, beautiful, worn look. How nice so far, right? So let's let this dry real fast. And I'll show you what else I do with it. You have an orange jeep Cherokee? I would drive an orange jeep Cherokee jerky. Absolutely. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. That's what I'm here for, girl, to help you out. So let me know if there's anything I can help you out with in the painting world. I've been painting furniture for eight years now, and I never thought that my hobby would become my full-time job. And uh, now it has, and I'm just so blessed. And so I just want to come on and help other people as well. You guys know I also have a, oh, let me see here, I always have, also have a coaching cl uh, club for anybody who wants help growing their business. You can go to styleshabby.com and click coaching if you want to get some more information on that. We've got about 70 ladies in there as well. Uh, thank you, Sharon. I think you're pretty awesome too. All right. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and dry this real fast. So remember, do the wiggle, do the dance. Who says you don't burn, burn off calories, right, when you're painting furniture? Thank you, Monica. Hey, Jackie, how are ya? All right, let's get this tabletop done. We're almost done, almost done. Yep, me too, Tina. I think there's so many times, like, if I had to, um, you know, I, I see a lot of auctions and things like that, and I go to auctions, and I just think to myself, if there were so many people who especially are starting out in life, you know, you're just married, you're just trying to put together a beautiful home, um, or even, you know what, you just kind of want an update. You don't have to spend a ton of money, right? I just, you know, I go to auctions, and I go to all these, like, thrift stores and things like this to find projects, and I'm just like, wow, you know, if somebody needed X, Y, Z, they could find it for, like, five, ten, you know, fifty bucks, depending on how much they want to spend, Take that home because at the end of the day, it just really the most important thing is that, you know what, you like the style of it in terms of the shape of it. Who cares about the dents and the dings? Does it fit your piece? You fit your place, your space? And then paint it, right? Yeah, absolutely, Tina. It's very, very relaxing. They say, they say that um, when you paint, your blood pressure lowers. And I don't know about you, but when I get into painting, you forget about other things, right? So it, it just puts you in a place where you lose track of time, you lose track of maybe the things, the bigger things that you have on your mind, and for that moment, you're totally into it, right? That's what I love about it. That's what I absolutely love about it. Yeah, <laughs> Monica's got the bug. I paint three or more pieces, right? Yeah, right? Okay, Tammy says, let's see here. Do not want Chevy Chic. Oh, would you tell me what Tammy just said? Her comment rolled by really fast. I'm going to go green to whites, but do not want to be yellow in the paint. I'm going to use dark rubs.
out to help her pulling the color out to not one shabby sheet, but a clean, updated look. Small kitchen with a lot of cabinets. I already get antique green cabinets, and it makes kitchen look small. Right. So you're going to want to make sure that if you're going, for example, with our paints, you would want to do an antique lace. So buttercream would be our buttery yellow, okay? But um, if you're trying to keep more shabby, not shabby chic, what'd she say? More of a clean look, right? Yes. Clean looks, when I think about the clean look, I think about white and I think about off-white. But definitely do not do any yellows. And also, by going with a light color, if you have a small space that you're working in um, and you want to make it more feel more open, um, you want to use a light color. So that's good. You're going down the right, the right avenue, right? So get rid of that green. Do a white. You're going to feel like it's like... <sighs> Get it done this spring. Open your, you know, when you can open the windows, you'll feel just like, wow, a breath of fresh air has just come through my kitchen. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So likewise, for those of you who are out there, and maybe you have, you're blessed with a bigger space, okay? Or you don't have a whole lot of furniture right now, and you're really trying to fill out a space, that's when you pull out the dark colors, okay? The dark colors fill out your space, the light, and make it feel more, um, your pieces feel bigger. So for example, if you have, you know, uh, maybe somebody, a child that has a smaller bedroom, and you're like, I want to paint the furniture, what should I do? steer towards a lighter color because if you have furniture in a smaller room and you painted a dark color it's going to feel bigger okay so that way you know if you want to fill it but at the same time you don't want to feel like it's out of proportion go with the lights definitely all right i think we're pretty much done guys i love it i love it i love it all right so one of the things that you do when you finish up this now normally i would let this sit for a little bit right because i really want to uh really really want it to be st stuck down because I'm gonna let kids use this as a chalk style table. So what you would do is put your first coat down, let it dry. Even let it dry overnight so it really sinks into the pores. Sometimes what people don't realize is that behind the scenes, even though you're finished painting, the paint is still doing a job, right? It's still pulling into the wood. So if you can give it till tomorrow and have a little bit of patience, that's always a good thing because this, this surface is gonna take a beating, right? So then I come back the next day and I brush on my second coat of, for my chalkboard because I want a chalkboard here, right? I just did one coat for the outer side, two coats for the inside. Now, when you actually season a chalkboard, you take your chalk stick and you put it on the side and you do this to it. This is called seasoning your chalkboard. Did you know that? Otherwise, if you don't do this, the very first time that you put something on your chalkboard, you get what's called ghosting, okay? And that's where the very first, like maybe you wrote welcome and you're stuck with welcome now on your actual chalkboard. So we season it by putting the chalkboard on the, or the, the chalk stick on the side, going all over, that chalk gets a chance to lay in the pores, and then we're gonna wipe it off, and then we can go ahead and it's ready to go, right? So remember, if I don't seal, I'm good to go. So now I'm just gonna wipe off all that chalk dust, and I've got myself a beautiful chalkboard. What's that? Hey, mom and dad, how are you? So there you go. Beautiful, I love it guys. I absolutely love it. I hope you like it too and I hope that you feel inspired, okay? So, like I say, if I seal this piece, it's no longer a chalkboard, all right? But if I leave it like this, now I've got a game table. So when the kids come over, you know what, for Valentine's Day, give them some chalk. Hey Caitlin, come play, play a game with me. Come play a game with me, all right? She's over there behind the keyboard helping me man the chat here. I think she deserves some game time. What do you think? I challenge Caitlin. Come over and say hello. This is Caitlin right here. Uh, I challenge you to a game of tic-tac-toe. Oh, are you good at tic-tac-toe? Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right, let's see here. Let's some strategy. All right, so let me go ahead. Now, remember, this is a gray smoky coal. You can do a black top. You can do teal, whatever you want, right? Hey, Laura, how are you? All right, I'll let you go first. Okay. I'll let you go first. Do you, do you prefer X or O? Doesn't matter. Surprise me. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I got to go for the uh, center. I'm sorry. I got to do it. I got to do it. All right, let's see. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to go right here. Oh, look over there. Look. Look, a baby wolf. Look, over there. Oh. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, you didn't see that? <gasps> you didn't see that? All right. Go. Go. Yeah. All right. All right. I got see, bamboozled. Do you see that? Yes, yeah, she got bamboozled. You see what I did? I pretend that I pretended that there was a baby wolf over the corner. She started to write her O. She moved it to a different spot. Strategy, my friend. Strategy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> too, too funny. Thank you, Caitlin. Trying to reach my height. Yes, right. She's just too tall. Too tall. You should have been short. 
Born short like me. Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wasn't that fun? So think about the colors. Imagine if I did a gray top, but I did a really pretty pink, pink uh, frame, right? And then all I do is I go out and I find something cute like this, like a little burlap, a little burlap sack or something, right? You guys know you can get chalk of all kinds of different colors. We drop it into the bag, you know what? And then attach that to the side of it and there you go, right? So they can draw on this if they want to, right? The little artists in your family, they can use it as a game table. You can trace out checkers on it if you want, do whatever you want, right? But the fun part comes when you just have a $10 piece of furniture that nobody wanted, you added some color onto it, and now it is a functional piece of furniture, right? How cool. Yes, Lori, this is a 1980s table, and we just flipped it and made it into a game table. We just put Liberty Blue on it, did some distressing on it, and I don't even need to seal it because you know what? It is so... It's just, it's done in that um, old kind of fashion, right? So I'm just going to let it go. And then if, what's that? Jackie's asking okay. what kind of primer we do use. I don't use a primer, Jackie, because that's a cool thing about our Junk Monkey paint. You don't have the primer, sand, or strip. So all I did was put my paint on it and go to town. And if I don't seal, I have a chalkboard. But if I do seal, I have a fully finished piece of furniture, right? Amaze balls. I love it. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I really appreciate those of you who shared on here. When you share, it helps our community grow and basically allows me to keep coming doing more videos for you guys and inspiring you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you for blessing my socks off. I hope you have a great day. Yes, mom, do this. All right. See, my mother's on here. I even just inspired my mother. Mom, go do this. All right. Yes. All right. I'll be there to check on you. All right. The only thing is she lives in Canada. I'm in the U.S., so we've got a little bit of a problem, all right? But it's time to go home for a visit when your mother needs a new chalkboard table, all right? <laughs> the top is, nope, this is just our Junk Monkey paint, uh, Cecilia. Um, so you can use uh, the paint to, like, paint a wall as an accent. Chalkboard wall, you can use it to flip furniture with, whatever you want to do, right? It's so, so easy. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Betsy Joe. I love it back at you. All right, I'm going to pop off of here. Hope you guys had a great day, and uh, I'm going go to go tend to tend to Bob's head. Bob's in the window. He people. He hasn't grown any hair yet. Okay, I got. I just don't know. I'm just not a green thumb. We could talk furniture and paint all day, but uh, yeah, I need some people in my life that actually really can help me grow Bob's hair, Bob's fro to grow. All right, and all that good stuff. All right, thank you guys so much. I will talk to you later. Annie, it was Liberty Blue and Smoky Cole for the top. All right, take care. Bye.